In this video we're going to be taking a look at the very young city of Los Angeles, California. Known around the world as the movie making capital, as our source of entertainment. Hollywood, the Holly Wand. What do we know about the Holly Wand of Hollywood? Let's find out. And here we have a map from 1892. And in 1892, the city of Los Angeles, according to Wikipedia, not having much more than 50,000 people. Interestingly though, on this world map, if we zoom in, we see that Los Angeles is there, along with many of the other major cities San Francisco, of course, San Diego, Salt Lake City, Helena, Montana, very interesting. Perhaps a uh, look into maybe what Los Angeles once was. Why else would you put it on, on a world map? I've got a pretty large file to share with you on Old World Los Angeles. As we go through the photographs, we look for any sort of indication of what we consider to be the old world and old world technology and methods of building. And I would suggest Los Angeles not without the evidence to support that we had much more of a city in existence here before we have been told. The County Historical Art Museum of Fine Arts. What a mouthful. Quite a magnificent looking building, and in the modern day it looks like it, they're calling it the Natural History Museum, so they filled it up with dinosaur skeletons and all of that type of stuff. But you, you, can, you can tell by looking at this, we've got the same hallmarks of the old world. Stone columns, uh, the ornate detail. There is also a fine arts building. This one really is something quite special as well. Um, you can see the detail here, we'll zoom in on that, you saw this one. And if we look a little closer, you really get a sense of the, uh, the detail, the fine detail. And this is just a, a sneak peek of the interior of this fine arts building. Supposedly built in the 20s. And it's spectacular. And of course a typical street scene with the street cars and the domed buildings with the spires on top. All old world hallmarks. A bustling old world metropolis. Not really rising from from the nothingness that they tell us it did. And we have of course a very thin backstory. Spanish rule. Mexican rule. Pio Pico. Mm. Post-conquest era, um, really not much happening until after this time frame here. Victorian downtown LA, here's a good one. Very interesting. 1894 from that time period that they said were 50,000 people lived there. Again, looking very built out. And we do have a quite a large file, so I'll try to keep this moving. Get you as many visuals as I could find. Get the sense of the details though in these photos. The gates on the ridges of the roofs. Very tall spire there. An interior of a hotel. Very um, ornate. Very interesting. An old mansion. 
see high on the hill with the conical dome. And then we get to the Ace Hotel. Um, quite a few visuals of this one as well. Let's get right to the interior. And no shortage of theaters, of course, in Los Angeles. And they'll tell you all of these were built at these early 1900s time period. Many of them no longer in existence. Some, actually many still are because of the narrative that goes along with Los Angeles and the entertainment aspects of it. But I think what we're looking at are uh, remnants of the old world. Love the light fixtures. Level of details off the charts, really. There's a good look at the exterior and part of the interior. Take a look at the detail here. Have you ever known anyone in our modern time to even consider building in such a way? Hmm. You have this classic look, what you see in a lot of cathedrals, the statues sort of embedded in the building. This would be the Alexandria Hotel. The Ambassador Hotel, just giving you a good idea of the level of interior finish that we're, we're looking at here. There's the Ambassador, which we just saw. So again, uh, although the outside not looking too elaborate or ornate, the interior has got the royal treatment, so they say. This is a very interesting building, the auditorium. Largest concrete building in the world, they're telling us. We'll see this in a few other forms as we go through here, but you can see um, the little cupolas on the corners, or domes, whatever you want to classify them as. You can see them down the side here, too. Massive structure. Beverly Hills Hotel. Again, having that similar look. And of course the university, we'll see that again as well. Looking much like you would build a, what we would think of as a church, but we're calling this the university. This is an interesting one, the uh, Bullock Wiltshire Department Store. Looking very Art Deco Gothic style. A lot of that styling going on in LA, as, as you'll see. Really, LA with an interesting story, if you think about it, on the. Uh, in the and when you look at it through the lens of uh, population growth, you know, the city, really the city of the 20th century, as the uh, whole Hollywood thing takes hold and the population increases dramatically really over that time period. You can see we go from 100,000 people in 1900 to almost 4 million. Now this is the city of Los Angeles of course, even the outlying areas um, experiencing major sprawl during that same time period. But really 100,000, not all that much for 1900 and what you're seeing here are many buildings that uh, either existed or had just freshly going up at that time period, or so we're told. Um, and of course we're casting seeds of doubt on that here on this channel and suggesting what we're looking at is uh, buildings that were founded and not constructed uh, during these time periods. And they may now go for all of them, uh, you never know. But uh, a lot of them show these, all the hallmarks of uh, what we consider to be the old world. The old Biltmore Hotel. A lot of Biltmore Hotels have popped up in my research all over the states. Hayward. You can see the stuff, even here in a postcard form, you can still see the, the designs and the arched windows. And here they're telling us in this, the new $1,500,000 post office and federal building in Los Angeles. They have to tell us that, right? It's a way to uh, set the narrative. Of course, you have the upper columns, 
a horse and buggy era and the streetcars taking all the boxes of the old world old mckinley school now this sort of uh what you might call clay roof styling and you're going to see this really indicative of this area maybe what we call the uh, spanish colonial influence um i think really showing us the hallmarks of um a regional style of the old world working its way down into central america across the southwest of the states So you have the banks with that very all too familiar look and what we're, what we're putting into question really is the level of uh, um, majesty of these buildings in inside and out and often it is the inside that really puts things over the top the Hershey arms and many of these of course having faded into history which is one of the major reasons why I like to bring you these visuals a, a compilation of a specific region is sort of my go-to here on this channel I hope you enjoy the visuals I have an old church Lincoln High School quite quite the structure for a high school especially very interesting not a lot on these locations, these structures. The Mullen and Blewett clothing retail store. And you can really just just get a sense of the detail here. First Methodist, um, yeah, M.E. Methodist Episcopal, I believe. New University Club, and you get these vague terms as well for uh, some of these structures. Very odd looking structure, this one possibly altered, built onto. Um, probably a lot of that going on in this narrative. We've seen the evidence to support that in many of, many of the locations we've looked at here on this channel. The Fraternal Brotherhood. Well, that really sums it up, doesn't it? So a large part of this uh, old world research has to do with these um, organizations um, being a large part of the deception, having founded much of these structures and claimed them as, as their own, putting phantom architects' names on them, or attributing to architects that in no way possible could have had the time to design these structures and then we get into the actual building of these structures and the timelines were given for those and uh, the bottom just falls right out of the narrative so depending on where you're at in this research I just encourage you to take in the architecture and consider the possibility that with the with a wave of that holly wand we have been deceived and that our true history is much more glorious than we've been told and the history of division and um, the caveman narrative and all the rest of that is, has just been um, placed upon our consciousness upon our psyches to make us think that we are less than we actually are and that we're capable of much more. And again, we're seeing the church narrative popping up. Why on earth would you build a church in such a manner? How on earth could you build a church in such a manner? Uh, it's such, especially at such an early time period, but even in the modern day, there's no way. There's no way, especially with the building materials that these things were were made of. Even this postcard giving you a bit of that mud flood look. It doesn't really make sense why you would enter a building on such a slant. Anything, any building that's constructed, um, especially the face of the building, typically um, is designed to enter at a level, um, level plane, let's say. 
they're calling this just the cathedral. There's, it's just lazy at this point. There's no, uh, seems to be no effort to even give it a denomination. You've got statues right on the tops of these. You have, the, of course, the dome cupola combination and the, and the Antiquitech. A jazzed up cross here. Uh, harnessing the energy of the ether. So when you see all this, a lot of times it'll be in conjunction with some sort of water work, either in the lower area of the building or a fountain up front. All part of the, that uh, energetic system. Here we have a hospital with a dome. One, two, three, four, five, six stories. And a dome on top of that sixth story because it's really easy to do at that early time period. I don't have a name for this church, but you have, of course, the circular cymatic windows ticking all the boxes and really faded into obscurity. <laughs> Get a look at this one. First Methodist Episcopal Church. And this being the uh, the second Methodist Episcopal Church we've looked at, um, really really taken the the size of the structure and the detail. And this, there's no photographs that I could find of this, just this old postcard. But you still really get a sense of what you're dealing with there and why. The question is why. Why is the, are there no other records of these structures? Why have they all but faded into the past? Why do we have to dig so deep, it's so hard to find any trace of these? I think it's a valid question. Memorial Library, University of Southern California. You see again the statue work there in the front. Probably has been tamed down on the upper areas here, feeling like maybe there should be something here, possibly more along the roof line, but no longer there. The Hotel Clark, let's take a closer look just to give you an idea. Just the texture of the face of the building here itself is a dead giveaway. I know it's not a great photo, but you're, you're, you're getting a sense of, of what it might have taken to uh, to build this maybe and uh, what it may have looked at looked like in its prime this is the right calendar the right calendar building yet another one of those classic old world rectangular structures almost like batteries Harbor District City Hall had a dome, of course. And then here you have the uh, horseless wagon. I think that's a fantastic uh, image. Gives us an idea of the juxtaposition between the old, big old stone buildings and the mode of transportation at the time. Here's the old observatory on the hill, and which I would suggest has been altered and turned into an observatory. Look, look at the uh, majesty here, buttresses coming off here, the circular section, and a bit the uh, landscaping. So more to the story with that structure, for sure. An agricultural building at the Exhibition Park, of course, made of all brick with the arches, uh, surrounded by dirt, looking like it's been there for a while, and maybe... Um, covered with a thin layer of mud all around it. This is the Student Union University of South California, Southern California again, USC again. A lot of old world structures attributed to the old universities. Easy to hide in the universities, they're doing the, doing the scrubbing of the mines and the indoctrination for the new world. Here we have a, a theater built like a castle. Here's the interior of that, just to give 
give you a sense of what we're dealing with. Who are the finishers? There, the better photo. Who were the who were the finishers? Who were who were do, who was doing all this coffering on the ceilings, making all this fit together? Questions that that you have to ask. Why is there no credit given? Why why have they all been all been all but erased from history? At least there should be museums to these structures and to the people that built them. But there's not. And we have to dig and we have to search to find them. It's called the Church of the Open Door, the structure here. You can see their sign in the front. So definitely a West Coast old world metropolis, Los Angeles, just as it is today. yet another church. You almost think that these things must, we're to expect that these are easy construction. These uh, structures, these old churches, there's so many of them and every location that uh, you look really. Here we have the city hall. Not sure what to make of this one. Has a bit of an old world feel, maybe modernized. I don't know, I think it's worth including. Definitely questions surrounding everything, and uh, let's see when this one was built. So just a quick uh, blurb on this one. We're, we're looking at a two-year construction period in the 20s, 1926 to 1928. Post-World War One, just before the uh, stock market crash, and they're saying they're giving us a two-year window of construction. So this is a great example of one of those buildings that are come along a little bit later in our historical narrative into um, just before the World War Two. Um, I think we have to question question it all, folks. Not just the not just the ones from the 1800s. We have to come right down into um, pre World War II and look at look at World War, World War II as really the, the wiping of our memory, a, a hard wipe. Because I think there's a lot of trauma surrounding that period and a lot of uh, shame and a lot of people don't talk about. A lot of the people that I knew growing up did it. You just don't talk about the war. It's a good way to hide the past. Here's another city hall. They're saying previous city hall. Another a different Bullocks. We saw that we saw a different structure earlier on with a similar name. This is the Bunker Hill area. Look, look, look at this structure here. Really something else. There we can see the uh, tops of this one. Really stands out. The symmetry in those two uh, structures. And you have the incline there. Bunker Hill. And just no shortage of good sized structures, multi-storied structures. Early 1900s, this photograph. Remember, only 100,000 people living there. Multi-storied brick structures. And an Elks Club. And this one is right in that same time period as the City Hall, built 1923 and 24. I don't know if that means it's one year, maybe one and a half years, or two years to build this structure. A really immense structure for the purpose of what it was built for. Benevolent and Protective Order of the Elks. Benevolent. It's good to put that in their name, in case we weren't sure it's in the name. So, no need to question it. Examiner Building. Um, a newspaper at the time, really obvious old world with the really tall spires coming off the domes on the corner, really perfectly symmetrical. This looking like a docking bay for a dirigible. You can just imagine how people would get out there and that would be a way into the building. And then we're looking at the interior of the same building. No, no, no amount of detail spared. This is, we have cherubs in the architecture. 
we have all sorts of detail looking like stone everywhere you look. The Figueroa Theater, one of many theaters. Uh, this one covered up with a lot of flags, but you can still see the detail in the architecture. Merchants National Bank, Farmers and Merchants National Bank. That classic column look with the basement windows, of course. An old photo, again, from that time period where we're told uh, there was most likely 100,000 people-ish in that area. Looking very built out on old. Not looking like a young city. These structures not looking young whatsoever. Looking like they've been around for quite some time. Very thin, very, very thin narrative we're dealing with. I have a women's college. Let's see it here. Just for the women. Having that uh, William H. Clark look. William H. Clark Mansion. Uh, you can check out my video on that. From New York. Classic old world styling. We've seen this in many places. This would be the... I'm not sure. A million dollar theater. Trying to read the uh, title for my thumbnail, but it's hard to tell. No level of detail spared. Who's doing this? Who gets the credit? Check out the bison's head here. Who gets the credit for all this? Hmm. Really something special. The hamburger department store. And now if you're from Los Angeles or you've been there, or you lived there and you're familiar with any of these locations and you have any sort of color to add to the uh, to the visuals here, please do so in the comments. Say I welcome any sort of interaction um, like that. Uh, and don't forget, to, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe and follow me for more of these. I'm doing what I can to bring you as many of these visuals that I find as possible. I think it needs to be out there. The Herald Examiner building. So we saw an Examiner building earlier. This is a, the Herald Examiner. So yet another structure with uh, detail looking like it's from the Byzantine Empire. Come on. So I, I have to say then what we're looking at here, I'm not sure if it's from this building or the previous ones. Probably this one now that I look at these arch windows. That might fit better. We, we saw an interior shot earlier. This making sense. We have an old high school from 1873. And if we look at the Wikipedia write up, 1873 should have less than 10,000 people living in Los Angeles. So coming up from nowhere, really. So as you look at these structures, keep that in mind. There was nothing really going on until the 1900s, according to the narrative we've been given. And the growth of Los Angeles really tied, to, tied in with the, um, the construction of an aqueduct that would bring water to the valley. Um, that project beginning in 1905, we're told. Um, oh, sorry, the project beginning in 1908, 1905 is when they first started to um, decide to build it. And they said they used these li three limestone quarries to construct it. I don't know. And we're looking at these structures here, all predating that time period, really. Coinciding or predating that time period. Right, or right in, yeah, exactly, right in that time period. The Holland Beck Hotel. They have another structure back here, even in the foreground here. We've got a serious old world majesty. Holland Beck from another angle. So, I don't know, I find it difficult to believe that an aqueduct they built in the early 1900s was really what sparked the growth of this place. It, it's looking to me like all of this was here um, before that time period. And there's a cover story going on um, with that aqueduct. Hollywood First National Bank. Of course, you've got to put statues 
up the top for a bank and you see the uh, looking like eagles. I've heard some uh, people suggest maybe phoenixes, the birds uh, mistaken for eagles. Possible. Phoenix, a, a symbol of um, the old world uh, civilization, some have suggested. What do you think? Eagles or sphinxes? Phoenixes, sorry. Not sphinxes, but I do think we will see some sphinxes here in Los Angeles. Uh, this is a depiction of an old Warner Theater in Hollywood. Just a drawing. I'm sure it existed and we're looking at a sketch of a photograph. Take a look at this. Hotel Melrose. Wow. You have your Antiquitec. Classic chimney, which uh, some have suggested part of an air exchange system, possibly, and not necessarily for burning fuel for heat as heat would have been generated in these old world structures um, through the harnessing of the ether of the um, atmosphere. Interesting, I, I would suggest. And let's not count it out, just because we're not familiar with it. We, if, you're, if you're ready to uh, admit that there's a deception, and the ones that brought us the automobile and that brought us gasoline um, um, are in the game of deception, they're not benevolent uh, philanthropists uh, or businessmen, but actually um, trying to hide some, the truth from us, something, something that would diminish their wealth and power. It's not illogical, really. It's actually very logical to uh, think in such a way, I think. And they've sort of flipped the script on us through their control of the education system to make us think that it is illogical th to think in such a manner. So believe your eyes, use your common sense, and it's not really all that difficult to decipher. Emmanuel Presbyterian. And we are being told that this one was constructed in 1929, right in that same time period. A blanket decade for development in Los Angeles, it seems to me. Right in the early days of Hollywood as well. train station from that early time period remember less than 10,000 people really at this time period take a look at the Antiquitec on the roof now if you if you honestly believe that we're looking at just decoration I don't know what to say to you there has to be more this really looking like something that would harness and distribute uh, energy electricity looking like much more than just uh, decoration to my eye, and you get it here as well. This is a great example of Antiquitech. Part of the old steam train um, station, and of course the steam trains we've suggested in this research um, ran on steam in the old world, but not generated through the same means as we are familiar with. I think they repurposed the old uh, technologies and were able to um, use the steam engines with some sort of uh, ignition source that we use, coal, whatever it might be. Here's another train station, again with the attack on top. This very interesting, almost a onion dome, right? More than just a dome that ends here, but it curves back in. Spectacular, making no sense for the horse and buggy era for these early, early days in Los Angeles. The Philharmonic Auditorium. Now, this we looked at it earlier on. Um, they had it as the uh, that concrete building. And as I try to find you a build date for this structure, all it gives me is the Philharmonic um, Association organization um, and the time frame right in that period there. So I'd suggest that this structure we're looking at built right in that uh, same time period. This is giving you a good, good idea, a good view of the tech as well up here. You can see all the nodes all the way across the top here. And this has been a view of the inside of the structure.
Okay, so we this is the county courthouse. We saw this structure earlier. This one in the middle here is the county course, uh, courthouse that we're looking at. I have seen this one in other uh, uh, videos. I've used this structure before. This is very interesting. Let's take a closer look. So we're looking at the Model T era, maybe just a little bit past there. So the 20s, this photograph from the 20s. And you check out all the uh, ivy growing on the structure. And we're told built in 1891 at a time when there was about 50,000 people living in Los Angeles. Looking old, hundreds of years old. Uh, interesting dome, like an elongated dome with a ridge on top. A unique structure. Beautiful building. Um, I, th I don't know if I said City Hall. I have it down as Courthouse. I've seen it as a City Hall. Probably acted as both at one time. Now we have an interior of a theater. Sorry, I don't have the name of this theater. There's so many. I thought this was an interesting photograph. 1922. Looking like they're digging out the Colosseum. Something not right about this photo. This looking very old world with the arches. Hmm. The N Nado Hotel, Hotel Nado, Nado. <laughs> okay, we have a normal school, of course. Everybody just builds like this at this time, don't they? Multi-story, normal school, very intricate roofs, all sorts of protrusions in the roof, and you have your tech on top. Just the style of the time, that's what we have to pass it off as? I don't think so. I think these are much older. And much evidence here to uh, indicate we're looking at the visuals of a previous civilization. So here we have the Times building, the old Times building. Very early on, horse and buggy, looking like a castle. You can see the stonework. And you get the sense of that whole mud flood look as well, moving down the street here. Another amazing building right next to it. It looks like they're just selling stoves and ranges. Hmm. Okay, here's the old incline again. Very interesting, and you have the tunnels intact. Early time period. The incline rail cars. Very interesting. And what we're looking at here is a bird's eye view map of Los Angeles uh, from 1891 population of La Los Angeles at the time we're, we're told 65,000 people. I think most telling on a lot of these bird's eye views are the, uh, the buildings. And you can really uh, get a sense of the types of structures that were standing at the time when there was only 65,000 people supposedly living there. And here we have one from 1909. Uh, interesting, supposedly right after the aqueduct, which, which boomed the population and forced people to move into the area, we're told. There's the incline you can see. But 1909, and look at look how built out this uh, place is already. Really amazing. Something does not add up with the historical narrative. And while we're questioning the narrative, let's take a look at an orphan's asylum. And do we need to ask the question, why would you build in such a manner to house orphans? Who puts forth, puts forth the legislation to, uh, to build such a structure because of the high demand of orphans? It doesn't take much to put this one together, folks. All right. The Orpheum, probably one of several. We see many Orpheums all over the place, North America. There's another Orpheum. Let me know when it gets confusing. I think these are supposed to be people. So you can already tell the size of the opening, the grandeur of the structure. Now yet another Orpheum. That makes three. 
No shortage of Orpheums here in Los Angeles, California. The turn of the century. And of course, we have an interior of an Orpheum. I can't tell you which one. Giving you an indication of the level of finishing involved for these structures. Really, really like these shapes here. I've seen this similar shapes coming off of the ceiling in cathedrals, where all these lines come and meet. I think a real sort of a natural feel to it, like an opened flower or an open plant. It's also very unique, is that hard to say? I thought maybe pipe organ, but maybe not. Let me know if you have any idea what that might be. Of course the electric building done up with a little detailing and the rail cars. We have now the Pantages Theatre and these also show up all over the place. Some very interesting design here in the interior. And the Phillips block. This is interesting. This guy's jumped out at me a few times as I've seen this photo. Check out the structure up here. Screaming old world. If you really think they were building structures like this in Los Angeles, California at the turn of the century, I don't know what to say to you. We don't we don't build like this now. We can't build like this now. We weren't doing it back then. Remnants of an old world civilization. Sorry if you don't like it. But you may as well get used to it. Because we're there. The narrative has been blown to smithereens as far as I'm concerned. A polytechnic school? You see the columns. Greco-Roman styling. A lot of what you might call a bit of a mosque look in this region. Possibly a Moorish, uh, like Michelle Gibson describes it. Remnants of the Moorish civilization. Alright, we have the Powell Library in UCLA. Cymatic windows. It's perfect architecture. Check out the inside of this place. And you tell me if they were building like this in the 20s. Yes, that's right. This is supposedly constructed 1926 to 1929. So that means somebody should have possibly a great grandfather that worked on this. Of course, you, you won't be able to find anyone. Check out the woodwork on the ceiling here. And of course the painting. Even the paintings depict the architecture. Really soak that in, folks. And try to understand that you've been lied to. We need to get over it. This is really, really amazing. As a woodworker, I can't tell you the degree of difficulty that you're looking at here to get this done. Still the Powell Library. Paintings on the ceiling in a hundred years ago in Los Angeles, California. This is what was going on, we are told. No, these are the remains of a previous civilization. And they tried to give us a false history and we're seeing through those lies. This is the public library, interior of the public library. I'm sure they'll tell us it's also built in the 20s. Yes, indeed, 1926 this was built, we are told. Here we have the front entry. Ah, to be in Los Angeles in the 20s, when all of this was going up. Of course, not much in the way of construction photos. And I'm just going to leave those alone in this video. You can look up construction photos of any of these structures if you'd like, and feel free to rebut me in the comments. I'm sure you'll find extensive collections of construction photos from these buildings that went up in the 20s. Santa Monica Beach. Are you kidding me? Wow. Wow, this looks like a mosque from somewhere in what we would call the old world. Of course, we are looking at the old world, but it's a Santa Monica Beach. Words. 
does need to be spoken. No surprise there. Shrine Auditorium, Shriners. Still standing, I believe, this one. You can look at the weathering on there, though. An old photograph. And several of these style of uh, hotel type buildings in Los Angeles. This is a nice view, too. 1888. So that early time period where Los Angeles should have had somewhere around 40,000 people living here at the time. You can see the brick streets, the heavily worn brick streets and the rail car lines and the architecture that consistently goes on to out into the background. St. Vincent de Paul Church. No, we haven't seen this one already in this video. At first glance, I thought maybe it was a repeat, but no, it is not. It still stands. Take a look at it today. It gets a little grainy as I zoom in. Let's try this one. You see the statue work, the detailing, the balcony up here. There's that similar look I mentioned from the balcony in the uh, theater. And here's the inside of that church with its intricate woodwork, stone, finishing, and gold around the altar. St. Joseph Church. Massive structure. You can see... Actually, you don't see any people in this photograph. That gets brought up a lot here with the old world. You can see basement windows. You can see the nodes on the spires, peaks. St. Vincent Hospital. The St. Vincent College. There's your wagons parked conveniently outside. Horses must be uh, grazing in a nearby field. And there's the normal school yet again. We saw it in a previous from a different angle, previous photograph. You can see also the stonework, the stairs. This is all very old. Nothing new about any of this. Been there for a long time. The Stillwell Hotel. You can see some of the detailing here. And then of course on the inside you can see a lot of the column work. Intricate ironwork elevators here. All par for the course for the old world. All right, one of the many mansions. Beautiful photograph, very crisp. Get right up close. Take a look at even just the way that the brickwork or the facade or veneer work. Let's take a look at how it all goes together. Section of the chimney with these imprints. You get this this corner here. This photograph itself could be studied. But we don't have time for that in this. This is a compilation of Los Angeles for you. There's that same look again. So we're going to move on. We saw the Lankershim, that three, uh, three building stack. So here's the interior of the Lankershim Hotel. You can see the column work. Just to give you a idea again of what the interiors look like. Here is this building yet again, the auditorium. And this is the one they're saying it's the home of the Temple Baptist Church. I find that interesting. These two sinister gen looking gentlemen. Maybe not. Maybe he doesn't look sinister. He's putting on a good face. But this guy's got a bit of a sinister look to, to my eye. Of course all this is just my opinion. Y you're welcome to believe whatever you like, but I certainly invite you to open the door to this research never be bored. We're coming up on the end of the file and I want to, wanted to include everything I have so I know this is a long video and I've been wanting to make Los Angeles, make the video of Los Angeles for a while now. Look at the streetcar here and the tracks, the horse and buggies. Very interesting open air looking streetcar for a warmer climate. And there's the Times building we saw in a previous uh, photograph. We didn't see this in the background. 
And I'm not sure if this is part of the Times building or if it's the building behind it. It looks like this is all part of the same structure as it's been colored in on the postcard. That's a castle. And a balcony up there. Clock tower. There it is. Yeah, okay. Times. It is all part of the same building. Times building. And there's the, the bird with the outstretched wings. Eagle, possibly. Maybe a bald eagle. Golden Dome. Streetcars. Los Angeles, California. The Tower Theater. Get an eyeful of this guy. What are we looking at here? Wow. You can just make out the details. It's a grainy photograph. An early time period. Here's the interior of the Tower Theater. So we've got a bit of a skyscape up here, looking like. Or no, these are figures. Something in the clouds, all these figurines in the clouds looking very old world as we would conventionally describe it. Looking very much like something you might see in France. One of the large metropolises in France. Here's, here's the entry in the Tower Theatre. You've got the stone columns, gold leafed detailing capitals. Spectacular chandeliers, even this spiky thing at the bottom of the chandelier is interesting. The Trinity Auditorium. There it is again. Saying it's the largest building of its kind. Not sure what that's supposed to mean. We've seen many, many buildings um, across America. So. There's the administration building, administrative building, University of Cal. And modern day behind the uh, tree there. It's an old photo. UCLA with the blimp. I find that very fitting. A lot of arches, all arches. Architecture jumps out at you. We did see this from a different angle earlier on. Let's roll through a bit more of UCLA. This looking embedded in the mud. These looking like mud flows here and here. Looking very old. And looking like maybe it's just being dug out, re repurposed, refurbished. Not in any way looking new whatsoever. Whatsoever. Not even close. All right, the United Artists Theatre. I think this may also be the hotel, the Ames Hotel we saw at the beginning, but it's worth a second look, just to give you an idea of the, the detailing on the front and the statues. It's like something elvish out of Lord of the Rings. Horse and buggy, Grand Hotel, multiple stories. One, two, three, four, five. Six, six floors. Mm -hmm. and buggy. Let's take a look close up top here. Beautiful, beautiful stylings of the old world. And here's what that building looks like in the modern day. When they survive, they leave this behind. And we can see with a bit of a better photograph just to get a sense of the finishing detail on the exterior of that structure. Beautiful. And there's the corner. Anyone out there that does this type of work, eaves and soffit work, ever done anything like this? Let me know in the comments. Love to hear how you get that done. Okay, the Warner Brothers Theater. Get under the dome on the corner. Dating back definitely into the 1800s, I would suggest. There we have a modern day look at it with all the detail. Very, very ornate in Los Angeles. Very ornate, a lot of these structures. So, no doubt a capital of the old world. And that's why we've made it such a large metropolis in the modern day. Warner Brothers Theater on the inside.
coming to the end of the file now. Water and Power Associates Building. Ticking boxes, old world boxes, arched entryway, interesting bump outs, basement windows. Check, check, and check. The Westminster Hotel, probably something we saw in that bird's eye. Screaming at you, old world tech. You see the gate, the spire. Once, once it's seen, it cannot be unseen, folks. You cannot unsee this, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Once it's accepted, this, the uh, snowball continues to travel down. And you'll start to see it everywhere. And a final shot at, in 1929 at the uh, UCLA, it looks like. Okay, well, if you're still with me, I appreciate you getting through this video with me and sharing the visuals of Los Angeles. The Los Angeles of the old world. Much more to the story than we've been told. Thanks for watching.